I just think they gave Sanguine a pretty solid draft top to bottom. I think Sanguine, it really has a lot of comfort picks and should be able to control game one. Yeah, then Sanguine get the comfort. It was the long distance they did on Friday. Thank you, Gore and Agro. Fitch and Myth obviously getting the views there from Doug as he moved into Renegades up against Sanguine. Make sure you let us know who you think is going to win in chat. And Myth, Renegades first pick this Jing Wei for Barracuda. The Persephone falls over to Sanguine. Wrong Yu gets to play the Hercules. Panatoms on Erlong. Netroids on Rom. I mean, it does feel as though to me Renegades let a lot of quality stuff fall over to Sanguine. They really did. A bunch of best in class. A Wei, you know, a Fafnir, a Thoth, all these picks that want to get some items online might end up getting overwhelmed as Variety has been knocked up. First blood goes to your core, and Laspra can't even step in. Sanguine already it's coming in hot. Not often the cringe gank happens on the solo side of the map, but this time Sanguine <laughs> are going to be benefiting from that as a nice double knockup in the long lane. Oh, but good use of that dash. The last Barracuda almost closed the gap, but a better response from Wrong Yu slows this down. So Barracuda, low on HP, has to reposition. Remember, those beads were forced out much earlier on in this laning phase. Still another 50 seconds before he has those. And now Jake being forced to reposition. You don't miss. He's going topside. It seems he should be able to get away this way, but I mean, how far can he hope to run? Comes back around underneath the roll in from Netroid. Cripple Arrow should have been there. And now the blink from Wrong but what's he got to follow this up? Driving strike into a basic attack, and Sanguine already have two. Man, Sanguine non stop aggression in the long lane. That's how you play. For Renegades' is jungle in mid to get active in the early. Right. I mean, I think people kind of under undervalue how important it is as Jake comes topside. Hammer lands on the wrong U. Driving strike, but he is oom and slowed. And in comes Barracuda for a little bit of revenge. Wrong U dropping and Barra getting one of his own. But Panatom, two-man nine turns blessing. No knockup, but Barracuda's oom and Netrioid takes the kill gladly. And now Panatom with the dash closes the gap. A hammer lands, but a good leap gets Jake away. Ends up being a one for one. Barracuda goes down for Wrong Yu the other way as Variety is low. And this bat of the hell ultimate means your core gets to solo Variety. Sanguine are, are taking over everywhere. It's a very good look for him. I think for the first time this game in six minutes, we're getting a slight break so we can take a little bit of a look at the builds. And it seems like it is going to be a Katana build coming through. But as I say it, grass with death from Shinto. Yeah, they want this kill on the last for He does go up into the ultimate, trying to use it to escape, but there's nowhere to go. This is a great response from Sanguine. Yarkor, or not Yarkor, but Lasper went up to try and invade in response to all that duo side pressure. Sanguine now. I mean, they can't fight there because Lazarus on the right side of the map. They have to respect that Sanguine have the numbers, but this bleed is getting bad. Now Yarkor getting collapsed on by three. Venenu, Lazra, and Variety collapsing. Yeah, I don't know how Yarkor makes out of this. No ultimate available. He does have some sustain, but my man just kind of got caught this time on that proxy. So at least they get something out of this, but you're right. Gold Fury is going down for Sanguine, and they're controlling Jake all at the same time. But a big knockup from Barracuda into the ultimate, and Wrong Yu falls. That is huge from the duo later Renegades to bounce back. They needed that desperately. Now, Panatom will claim the life of Barra in trade, but that is way better than if that Gold Fury just went down for Yarkor's life. And now here comes last for what a great ultimate from Shinto. Stops the aggression. Final judgment hits Shinto. Venenu gets the kill there. Renegades starting to wake up at the same time we thought Sanguine would be looking to fight. Man, just unfortunate timing for Sanguine there. That huge knockup from Barracuda absolutely right, changed the theory. So Sanguine started up. Variety now with that same burden that Barracuda and Jake handled so well early has got to try and find a way to slow this down. And Sanguine back up right away. In fact, they want to take the fight instead. Wrong Yu blinks in. The damage from Netroid is decent, but Wrong Yu ends up getting popped right away. Final Judgment hits two as Shinto takes care of Ben, but Laspra gets the return kill. The Arcor puts Barracuda down, and it's two for two. But Netroid, oom, um, at the back of the fight's gonna fall to Variety as they make it three for two. And with Shinto stuck in between three, they're gonna make it four. Yeah, Shinto left high and dry here, gonna fall down to Jake. Wrong use engage was good. He finds the blink in, gets a two-man punch, but the follow-up... Or, or if Lazper's able to get to the back on a priority target easily, or Variety gets disruptive. Sang wouldn't have the tools necessary for this pick or for this dive comp to work. He just felt that the execution is lacking a bit as Panatom gets stunned out of the 72 transformation and hit with the final judge, but they're not letting Panatom leave here alive, and he falls at the very beginning of the fight. 
Panatom asleep at the wheel, dragging his team into a bad situation. Variety finds Shito on the tail, and Yarkor forced to use the bat out of hell defensively, and he should be able to get out of this situation alive. Panatom, bud, what are you what are you doing there? You can't just walk into three members alone. The turtle form's know. nice, yeah, it gives you a shield, but it's not gonna save your life in that situation. And now 16 oh. minutes into the game, we're looking at the first fire giant. Well, it's one of my new favorite things to say. Renegades are going to start up a 16-minute fire giant. And they're right. I mean, they, they certainly seem to be. <laughs> they have it down to half HP already. No one contesting from Sanguine. And what a turnaround here from Renegades. It's so impressive that they do not panic with the way that this early game went, because I think there was plenty of room to do so with the way that Sanguine were playing so aggressive. Tom weirdly in they need to back fast. Pushing up mid, I suppose. But they are going to back. They got the tier 2, but they got to be here to defend Phoenix's fire giant. Crushes Phoenix. Is Yarkor and Wrong, you made it in. Boulder to try and crush the waves, but Renegades oh, no. do too much damage. Left Phoenix down, but Barracuda stuck inside the grasp of death. Airstrike gets him out, and the snipes from Nectroid nearly are enough to clean the fight up, so they'll try and collapse onto Variety at the back. Knockup is huge, and they kill him even through the thorns. Final Judgment does find two targets. Sanguine want to keep up the fight, but they've already lost the left side Phoenix. They need a lot to make up for that. Hard to chase into a Thoth as well. Every time he turns around, Ven can sink a ton of damage. Oh. So instead, I'd like to see him put a soft defense here, try and force out some of the utility, and then re-engage. But instead, oh. Jake transforming instantly, going for the mid. Yeah, they're switching targets. This is all about the middle Phoenix. Netrioid and Longy were both in left. This is 3v4 here in mid, and Anatom took a bunch of damage right away. Jake moves in, stun, and Yark 4 hit by the final judgment. But Jake ends up getting hit by the grasp of death. Panatom oh. moves in, it gets deleted. Barra has the damage, but Jake falls as well. Last, we're going to use the ultimate to land on Netrioid in the back, but Netrioid to the sky, yeah. cut down by that ultimate from Lazarus. He gets the double, make it a triple. As Shinto falls as well. The rest of Sanguine forced to retreat to the fountain. As a renegade say early game, who they ran all over Sanguine here in the lake. Better play for the objectives next time, boys. Sanguine get an early game lead, but aren't quite able to turn it into anything. Renegades bring it back to even, and then immediately. Well, renegades the get to come through and run the exact same composition here in game number two. They are more than happy to do so, but it will be the question of the Cthulhu here in game number two. Is it enough? to balance things out. Are the Renegades going to be able to find themselves uh, maybe surprising 2-0 here against Sanguine? Let's find out in game two. I'd certainly be surprised, Gore, if Rangren's Renegades 2 0 Sanguine, excuse me for mixing the teams together. Oh, but this has been an excellent set already so far. Sanguine came out to a great start at the beginning of game one, and then Renegades yeah, bounced back. That's exactly what I expect to see them do, is to try to exploit that, look for some purple buff invades, but already, Renegades have seen it, and they're sending Ven over very early. Ven trying to help make sure they don't end up losing these buffs, and that means Wrong Yu could end up paying the price, but they're getting a little bit of backup of their own as Shinto shows up, and Bera stuck in between. Isn't that just the way for those Hunter players? You try to follow up, and you're the one that ends up dying. Unfortunate situation. Not to say that Renegades, Renegades is any slouch either. This Thoth we've already seen is an absolute menace. Vent's mechanics have been pristine. Jake trying to get aggressive into the transformation. The blink came from Wrong Yu, but that left Netroid on an island, so Wrong Yu turns around. Boulder avoided by the airstrike, and Netroid doesn't take the damage from the Jingwei ult either. But now he's stuck, and in comes Lazbra to clean on up. Barracuda gets one, Anatom gets the other, but Lazbra able to take care of Netroid and maybe even Panatom as well, but the turtle form too strong. Two for one in favor of Renegades. Wee bit of a whiff there from Lazar on the Kusari Gamma. Up no here in the set. It puts so much more of this pressure on the Sanguine to start the backslide they've been in lately and to catch back up to PK who have taken that third place spot. It does, and now we're starting to see the first real grouping of the game. Panatom caught out, trying to pick up the Oracle, surrounded by four, is going to lose his life to Barracuda. Nice pick, and this is exactly where it happened last time. Gold free around that 12 minute mark. It's going to be Renegades starting up. Metroid's here, though, to try and slow it down, but they drop the objective quickly for the fight instead. It's Jake that goes in first. This doesn't but Sanguine, matter, though. Renegades head over to the Fury Pit, think about it, grab Oracles, but decide they don't really want to force anything. Kind of reminded me of one of those OG mid-camp fights we used to see, but Wrong Yu wants to bring it to him, dives into the tower with a blink, but isn't quite able to find anything. Jake went all the way forward, but in the back on looking for more damage. 
Lazbra. He used the Aegis, but Yarkor continuing to push up. La the Nenu, I think, put the final judge on the Panatom and then the Hieroglyphic Assault. And that's enough for the first kill to fight Yarkor low as well. Variety comes in, but great disruption from Wrong Yu with the driving strike means Wrong Yu has to stop. And now the Snipes coming out from Netrioid. That does get the Aegis out from Terra, but I don't know if there was a ton of opportunity there for kill. Bear is low, point so for them to start looking for a bit more as they finish off some nice power spike items. But Panatom showing his presence in right. Might force Variety into the ultimate. Taking him a little while to get there. Being greedy with it is Variety. As he gets Just taunted in for the nine turns. Blessing no need for him to die there. And Laspra now stuck in a bit of a bad spot underneath the tower. Taking a ton of damage. Boulder does not connect. But Yorkor keeps him locked down. Panatom to show up and make it two for zero. I better find out later that Variety's 4 key is just unfunctional on his keyboard because there's no excuse for him to fall. There's no reason he has to die and it baits Lazra into a poor position and now Sanguine don't have to win a team fight. They don't have to do anything of the sort because they're able to find two clean picks and find a tier 2 tower as well. Renegades have been playing this knife's edge where they've been winning out in the team fights despite losing out on damage ready and the penetration coming through from Tyler with Assault means that if Wrong Yu's ever isolated, he could lose out on the majority of his health bar. Guan Yu also has a very strong counter matchup in a Yarkor as he moves forward in the jungle of Variety looking for a little bit extra poke. And it seems like it's gonna be Sanguine going in. Gage much cleaner taunt into the grass of death. That means Jake and Ben are both low and they both fall right away. But Lazra gets to the back line and finds a way to take care of Shinto. Barracuda now behind Lazra trying to back him Huge up. As Shinto puts in damage from the grave, that ends up being a four for one in favor of Sanguine. Panatob gets a double and just like that, Sanguine claw their way back in. When the engage works, this draft is nuts. It absolutely is. Your counter punch playstyle, Renegades, only works if you can avoid the first hit, but they take that one cleanly on the chin. That's a knockout punch for Sanguine as they move into the Fire Giant. Clean play. All off the back of a little bit of over-aggression from Variety, stepping too far forward there as he gets caught out, and the rest of his team has to step up and try and peel him out of that situation. Sanguine's playing smartly, waiting for Shinto to come up in 10 seconds so all five members can have the Fire Giant buff and begin this final siege of the game. Only three towers standing between Sanguine and the base of Renegades, but not all is lost if you're a Renegades fan. They've got a strong defense. Thought being one of the best siege defense gods one of their the very important tools inside of the Descent of Madness. So they could look to put up a soft defense, but it's a slow rotation. But instead, Jake going in first, Variety popping the thorns. The chase is on. They've got Lazbra and Barra coming in underneath. That's why they're trying to get aggressive. So the ultimate from Lazbra lets him get into the back line, and Shinto pays for it right away. Barracuda losing the trade to Netroid falls to Yarkor. Wrong Yu is able to bury Lazbra in the back of the fight as well. Now Sanguine are hurt. Panatom and Netroid are low, but Renegade can't capitalize as Sanguine group up, let their fire giants sustain them and get ready to reseed this left side tier two. No ultimates available for either team here as Wrong Yu stepping forward. Maybe he's waiting for Jake to come out of that transformation to see if he can find an easy pool to set up for another pick for his team. Creates a ton of space, tower falls down, and now they can move in towards this Phoenix. It's only gonna be the three members, but instead Panatom splitting up the map completely with a wave already pushed up, he might be able to take it. Trying to force a teleport to come through in response. Variety Good gets God. there, but he's not going to be able to stop it. The Phoenix goes down already, and Panatom now winning the 1v1 trade, forcing Variety to retreat. Left side Phoenix goes the down as well. They got to be careful. Sanguine are here. They can't go up that far, which means at least here on the right side, there's going to be fire minions coming quickly. Now, Sanguine start up the fire. Renegades are nearby. But I'm not sure how much they're willing to commit to trying to defend. Yarkor goes into the ultimate, keeps three members at bay. Jake is here to contest because they don't mind throwing his life away. Panatom comes in to follow up with Yarkor, and Barracuda has to drop both relics just to survive. And even that seems to be too elusive. Yarkor gets the kill, zoning out everyone. And now Jake is in trouble. Variety came in to help, and he is in danger of falling as well as Panatom completes the rampage with five in a row. Renegades do this in-between defense, and it completely fails. It absolutely does. Barracuda uses his dash in to try and close gap on the Cthulhu once the Arcor goes into his ultimate, which is the right call to make, especially considering that Barracuda does go that tank shredder build. 
But from there, immediately Panatom blinks in, nine turns blessing, says, hey, your dash is down, bud. You're a sitting duck. That's a free trade for me. And meanwhile, the entirety of their front line, Variety and Jake, are just trying to disrupt the fire shine on their own, but they don't have the damage to pose any real threat. This felt like, again, a, a disjointed team fight from Renegades, and now the Titan under siege. Sanguine moving in, trying to drag us to a game three. Last result gets into the back line, but Panatom and Shinto have the answer. 34 and a half minutes in, and Sanguine find their response to Renegades, essentially running back the same oh. comp. Now, if you have to worry about two players taking it for Sanguine, it's going to open up their draft even more. Uh, especially, I mean, I guess there is a, a one way around that. Yeah, if Panatom starts picking it up and makes it look good here, I think that's the caveat. Then you have to start yep. banning it. Otherwise, I guess you can just keep giving him Persephone. It keeps him off Hebo, technically. <laughs> you have to yeah. figure that one out. But either way, Hera locked in at the very end there for Renegades. That's so far, Gorad Aggro. So who could expect anything different from game number three? Still me and Miff, still Doug bringing y'all the view. And Panatom choosing to take this Habwa into the jungle. Also worth noting, Yarkor taking the call and Lasbra the red. An interesting distribution okay. of those buffs. Maybe not exactly how they meant it to go. Hard to tell, but we'll see how Lasbra chooses to use it. Pinned against the wall with a driving strike. Rolling in his Netroid, catching him out, but no oh. slows at the Astro Arrow. One connects and Netroid hits every single shot. At least this way, Ben gets to hold on to speed, I suppose. Which tells me that Sanguine that... want this to be a long game. They want to take it as far out as they can and allow Panatom to free fall. Jake is in trouble. No way he can hold because the second he lands, he gets crushing waved. Shinto takes the decision making process away from him by putting him in the grave. Strategy. And watch that. But right now, Sanguine, for the third time in a row, are using this time to pull ahead. Then Marge, you play by his wrong, you get the double pull, double push, and Panatom drowns Veninu. He's gonna thank his support for that one, as wrong you did 100% of it, hitting a stun target and all now that. Now we're starting to see where the deficit's really gonna come into play. Sanguine gonna force Renegades to respond to the goal. Panatom puts his initial damage into Jake to control him, and the damage from Netroid Good God. certainly hitting home. Argus drop doesn't do much, but he's still here in the fight Ooh. as the boulder plus Panatom flattens Jake. Variety comes to the back line. Big knock up from Lasbra. Promised that would have worked seven minutes ago, too, as he takes care of the <laughs> Havois, but Netroid is the one that gets the return kill. It's two for one in favor of Sanguine, and Variety suddenly done with his big transformation. The Jekyll and Hyde is all Hyde now, as Sanguine continue to control Control the team fight. Variety has nowhere to go. The cooldowns aren't there. Good turnaround though. Once he gets all that madness built what? up, he has the fear, but he ends up missing the dash. Missing is the wrong word. Execution is not there. And Variety turns it into a three for one. My man swerved into a wall and he got punished for it immediately. Netroid's been allowed to free cast his entire engagement. Yarkor still maintaining the majority of his health bar is able to create some space around this gold. Netroid absolutely wailing away at it. It's your day, your day and, and this has not been it for him. He's not looking too good here, but Renegade is trying to make something from nothing. Group up around the Pyromancer. It's just Yarkor in here. The Polymorph comes through, but look at this damage! Yeah, Yarkor gets the three-man knock-up into the Rage transformation to Venenu, begging for some help. Wrong Yu gets the pull, and Yarkor completes the damage. But Wrong Yu now very much positionally committed and low. Lasper has already dunked in, but where is he going to go from here? And Jake and Variety all have to leave. Renegade thought they could start an F or up a Pyro, but Sanguine came back and said, no, we're not letting you grab any objectives for free. Variety will come in to contest the Pyro on the tail end, drops the Mire. And they did kind of a full reset, and somehow Sanguine are able to confirm it on the back of it, and Renegades can't do much. And Barracuda goes for a tier one oh, tower. No. Was it worth your life? I don't think so. Sanguine pick him up for free. Netroid getting the benefit of that kill. And again, that all happens because of that clean play from Yarkor running in and essentially soloing three people on his own. Barracuda's dead for 35 seconds. Netroid, not willing to let Variety walk away, rolls in. And the Fire Giant? Yeah, we're starting that up. They absolutely are. Sanguine 
have the objective pulled. Variety still nearby, but does not have the ult. The Arcor comes topside to cut off Variety's escape, but Jake comes underneath. That forces Sanguine to drop the objective. Now, Jake and Lazbra can look for a pincer maneuver as Tanatom gets stuck in between blinking from Lazbra into the sun, but crushing wave lets him reposition, and Lazbra has to retreat. But the snipes from Nectroid say no, 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 nowhere to go, and Nectroid puts him down. Yarkor chasing Venenu again. He's having flashbacks to the last time this hulking monster was at his back, but gives up on it now, for now. They're Sanguine. moving to the Fire Giant with a huge advantage. 6,000 gold, as you highlighted, and now Vision as well. Variety, you're surrounded. Yeah, he might end up even having to ult here. He does. Has already popped the thorn. That is returning some damage, but he's largely alone here. Sanguine looking for the collapse onto Variety, onto the Descent into Madness, and they get the first kill, but Panatom again in a tough spot, but able to retreat. Yarkor continues his personal vendetta against Veninu, shuts down the Hera. Jake barely making it back to the Tier 2 Tower Sanctuary as Lazbra lurks around the back end of the fight. Sanguine's like they're done with their thoughts about FG. They're going to come right to the Tier 2 Tower and burn it down for free. Well, Lazbra kind of over somewhere. in left. And then Yarkor alongside Panatom in mid for the 3-2 split. Lazbra off on his own. Oh Jake being pushed in. Yeah, you can transform, my man, but they should be just waiting for him. But no, they turn around to Lee with Lazbra in the back line, who cannot do enough damage to Shinto in time. So Jake still survives. Netroid lands back down. And wrong you can shoot. Panatom gets the double kill. And how much more are you going to make wrong you do? A triple kill for Panatom on the Hobbot jungle. And Myth, that really might just be the end of this game. Renegades waited around until the Titan fell. Yeah, save that aggression for the next set, I guess, Renegades, as Sanguine to barrel on through. Jake, you know better, bud. Save the KD. There's no way you're able to defend this one. <laughs> <laughs> At least go out 0-2. The Titan falling down to half, down to a quarter, and Sanguine right the ship. After a couple of rough weeks, they get their win in their previous set, they get the win here, and they're not ready to give up their top four spot just yet. Really impressive, the, the mental fortitude I think this team